In this video, we're gonna be covering some of the new apps and app updates centered around iOS and iPadOS 14. Like always, I will put links to everything in the description below, so let's get to it. AnyBuffer is a place to store links, images, files, whatever. I've mostly been using it for research. I was using Agenda for this, but I've been using it to kind of store um, specific research materials. So PDF documents, links to specific web pages, talking about um, whatever for videos and other things that I've been doing. But I've also been using it as a read it later service. You can create folders in it. So I can create these buckets. So stuff for articles and videos I wanna come back to and watch later or stuff for research for videos. You can also make smart folders as well. So depending on the content type added. So I have some that are specific for videos or images or files. Um, it will filter those automatically. AnyBuffer is a great app for anyone that's kind of looking for a place to just store stuff temporarily. This isn't stuff I'd want to keep forever, but a temporary storage solution. Lumi is the photographers and videographers app. It will show you what time magic and golden hour is at a given location. You can manually set a location or it can just show you it for your current location. What caught my eye is it's beautiful widget. It's seriously probably my favorite widget. I don't even need it every day or even every week, but it's something that it's just so beautiful. I just have on my home screen. It also has a really good Apple watch complication as well. If you're a photographer or videographer and need to know when magic hour or golden hour is, I highly recommend checking out Lumi. Soar is a replacement for the built-in music app. It hooks into your Apple Music library so you can play music, browse, do anything you normally would from the music app in Soar. But I actually don't use the app. In fact, one of my biggest complaints is there is no iPad version of the app, but it has an amazing widget. It has the widget the Apple Music app should have. When you add it, it shows what's currently playing and what's up next. It also has playback controls as well. One of my favorite things about the widget is I can tell it to automatically redirect to the Apple Music app. So when you tap on any widget, it is supposed to open up into that third party app. But what Soar does, or the Soar widget does, is when you tap on it, it opens Soar and then quickly goes right into the Apple Music app. This is really what the Apple Music widget should have been. I've been using an app called Sofa for a while to track shows that I wanna watch and movies I wanna watch and games I wanna play. But one of the things I really wish it had was the ability to show me um, an upcoming episode. So a show that's coming back that I'm really excited for is The Mandalorian. I know that it's happening every Friday, but I still want something that could track all the shows that I watch and tell me, hey, this coming Thursday, there's a new episode of Star Trek Discovery. So I've been using TV forecast for this now. Here you add all the shows that you're watching and it shows you the upcoming schedule for those shows. You could set up a notification system so you get notifications when shows are getting ready to air. But there's also a great widget that'll kind of give you a sort of calendar view, I guess, about what show is up next. Game track is similar to TV forecast. I've been using this to track upcoming games I'm excited about, but more importantly, my back catalog of games. I've been really focused on making videos lately, so my back catalog is just getting bigger and bigger. This is a great app if you're really into games and play a lot of different games on a lot of different platforms. When you add a game, you can add it for a specific platform. So if you are rocking both like a gaming PC and a PS4, you could kind of pick between those. It also has a good widget, which is going to be a big theme of this video because it is focused around iOS and iPadOS 14. Um, the widget option is really great. Stacking the game track and TV forecast widget together just makes sense. At this point, I doubt most people watching this video haven't heard of this next app. It's Widgetsmith. It's been a huge app that's kind of basically been taking over the app store. Uh, it got really big on TikTok and YouTube. And basically it's a way to create custom widgets. Now there are a lot of these apps out here and I've been going through quite a few and I might make a dedicated video to building custom widgets with different apps. Um, but a lot of those are really complex. What I like about Widgetsmith is it keeps the building of the widget simple. So some complex ones are like Scriptable. While I really enjoy Scriptable, it requires you to have knowledge about JavaScript or at least the ability to get JavaScript from point A, put it in Scriptable and create a widget out of it. So it's not as easy for everyone. With Widgetsmith, you can create custom widgets that include time, date, calendar, reminders, photo, weather, and even the position of the moon. 
Sticky Widget is a fun app, especially if you have a fondness for the Sticky Notes app on the Mac. You can add the widget to the home screen that looks like a sticky note, then you tap on it and you can type whatever you want there. You can change the font, the color of the sticky note, the font size, the spacing, whatever you need. This is great for leaving small reminders on your home screen. When I've been doing a little bit of photography shoots and stuff like that, I've been putting down must get shots in this. You can also have more than one sticky note too on your home screen. You just have to change the note ID. Sticky notes is a great way to remind yourself of stuff you know you're going to forget. I'm like that and I'm sure there are people out that are watching this. So when you unlock your phone, you have what you need to be reminded about or a nice note from somebody or whatever, just right there. Very similar to Sticky Notes is Scriblet. Scriblet is basically the same thing as Sticky Notes, but instead of typing text, you can draw things. So this takes advantage of the Apple Pencil and does really neat things with the Apple Pencil and Pencil Kit setup. So if you prefer using the Apple Pencil to just quickly jot down a note or something like that, this is the app for you. You could also put fun drawings on here. I'm not a very good artist, so I haven't been doing that, but I just used it for like quick, like, hey, I need to add this to my grocery list, or I need to do this really quick, or, you know, stuff that I didn't feel like needed to go into my task manager. This was kind of a great place for it to go. Speaking of the Apple Pencil, my channel is now sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector, but not like any other screen protector. When writing on the iPad with the Apple Pencil, you're writing plastic on glass. What Paperlike does is it gives this texture feel to it, so it feels like you're writing on paper when you're using that. It's a great setup if you do a lot of handwritten notes or drawing and you just want that added friction for when you're drawing or writing things out. It's a great accessory to have with an iPad and I will put my link in the description below, so be sure to check it out. Timery is one of my favorite apps. It's a time tracking app that I use to track where, how I'm spending my time throughout the day. I know it sounds weird, but it's actually really helpful to me and to keeping myself on track, especially when it comes to juggling multiple jobs. For iOS 14, Timery got a whole new widget set. One of my new favorite widgets is the ability to show me how I'm spending my time throughout the day. It also can kind of shame me into like, hey, maybe you should stop watching television and get to work when you should be working. It also added two features that, well, to be honest, I asked for. The first is a new shortcuts action that allows you to create projects through Timery. These will create projects for your toggle account, but through Timery and through shortcuts. So this is great. Anytime I start a new video project, I've added this action in there. So it'll create a whole new project in toggle, and then it'll create the project in things. That way I can track my time and track my tasks. The other feature is the ability to archive projects. So if you delete a project and toggle, that makes all of that time that you've tracked go away. But if you archive a project, the time is still there. It's just not showing up as an active project anymore. So this is how I always finish off projects. I archive them, I don't delete them. For those that prefer hyperscheduling, there's an app called Hour Blocks. Hyperscheduling is when you use a calendar to plan out your day. You fill up all of your time with different tasks and different meetings or projects or whatever. You, you fill up your calendar so you know how you're spending every moment of every day. This, this includes meals, relaxation time, and I tried this while, you know, COVID quarantine was happening and, and we were in the thick of it because I was having a really hard time balancing my time. You know, I, I, I work at my house here, so it was really easy for me to just go in the other room and want to play video games instead of working. So this gave me a way to schedule my time. At the time, I did that through Fantastical and just using a basic Google Calendar. But I've heard from a few of you that you were actually looking for a specific hyper-scheduling app, and this is where Hour Blocks comes in. You can schedule your day by each hour in hour blocks. If something will take more than one hour, you could duplicate it into the next time block. If there's multiple tasks that need to be done within that one hour, you can add sub blocks. There's also a to-do list for things that don't need to happen within a certain time block, but you can specify if they are urgent or can be done whenever. Hour blocks is a great way of scheduling out your day if that's how you wanna do your productivity system. Aviary is a new Twitter app. And what I like about it is it's a good iPad Twitter app. The first party Twitter app is terrible for the iPad. It just has this massive column for all the tweets and then it shoves all the trending stuff in your face. 
And I don't know about you all right now, but I don't really want to see what's happening in the news. Aviary gives you a three column layout. So first is your timeline, then your mentions, and then the details of a selected tweet. You can change that second column to be different things if you want. So Aviary has been a great way to go through Twitter lately. Everlog is a journaling app. It's kind of the polar opposite of the journaling shortcut I made. It's all about typing instead of handwriting with the Apple Pencil, though you could handwrite and use the new Scribble feature if you wanted. It's easy to go back and pick a specific date and you can go back and read that journal entry or you can just pick the today and start writing. You can write whatever you want. There's no real prompts if you don't like that. For me, I'll be sticking with my journaling shortcut, but I'm sure there's some people out there that prefer typing over handwriting or just don't want to use a shortcut. They would rather use an app. In one of my daily iPad workflow videos, I talked about how I've never found an email app that I really liked. A lot of you mentioned Spark and I had tried Spark in the past. I liked it, but my issue was I couldn't use it with my day job email. They didn't support Office 365 two-factor authentication, which is a must have. Well, in their latest update, they now support that. So I've moved all my email to Spark and Spark is now my default mail app. And I really like it. They did recently add widgets with their iOS 14 update, but to be honest, I don't see myself ever using those. I, I try and have specific times that I deal with email because email can be a little overwhelming to me. And I just, I don't want it in my face every time I unlock my device. But one of my favorite features about using Spark is it has the ability to send emails to different applications. So I use this with Things 3 a lot. So anytime I get an email that I just can't deal with in this particular instance, maybe I need to do a task first or need to deal with something, or it's kind of a, a, a thing that I need to respond to later, like I just don't have the answer right now, I can take an email and send it to Things 3. Then I can file it away later in my task manager. This way I don't have emails that I can't do anything about just sitting in my inbox. Speaking of Things 3, it also got a new update with some new features. First off is Scribble. If you're going through your task list, just kind of browsing through, having your iPad out of a keyboard case or just laying down on a table or holding it in your hand, and you're like, oh, hey, I really need to add this task. You can take the Apple Pencil and just start writing out what the task is. It's really nice, really handy. This is not something I knew I wanted, but it's actually come in handy a couple of times, especially when I was reviewing the iPad Air and I was kind of away from a keyboard. It also got excellent widget support. Now this was the app that I'm the most excited about for a good widget. When adding the widget, you have a small, medium, and large version. Personally, I've just been using the small one. And then you can change what you see as well. So you can change it to see a specific project or a specific view. Personally, I just leave it on the today view. On the two by one and the two by two widget, you get an extra button that allows you to quickly enter the new task view. I use a shortcut for this, so I'm not missing that personally. Fantastical also got Scribble support. You can just start writing out a new calendar entry and it'll use the great same natural language input to input that task as a new calendar event. Fantastical and Things have done a great job implementing the new pencil features when honestly, I don't think anyone was expecting or asking them to. I personally didn't think this would even be something I would want or need, but now that it's here, it's really useful. Now, I don't use it all the time. In fact, I probably only use it maybe once a week or so, uh, but it's nice to have it when I need it. Okay, so the last app I'm gonna mention is the Wallpaper app. A lot of people ask where I got my wallpaper in my iPad OS 14 walkthrough video. It's one of the few wallpapers that I've used that isn't a photo I've taken recently. Um, and that was from the Wallpaper app. There's a bunch of cool artsy images in here that you can scroll through and then you can change the different styles of those images. It's a really interesting app if this is the style of wallpaper you want. All right, so that's it for this video. Like I said, links to all the apps will be in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.